so guys, we're going to have an amazing time today. Right now, we are in month three, right? We're in month three of the journey, and right now we are going through one of my favorite books. It is the book of Judges. There are some crazy stories, like swords and battles and all kinds of amazing stuff. I hope that you guys are reading it, and if you're not, it's okay. Start now. Catch up. And, and you'll be good to go, right? You're good. All right, guys. So our first thing we need to do today is going to be the theme. Let's go over our theme right now. Denver's going to help me with these magic cards. Here we go. God, disciplines, sin, but rewards, obedience. <laughs> Again, God disciplines sin, but rewards obedience. Denver, can you say it? God disciplines sin, but rewards obedience. That's very good. I almost said that wrong. Theme of the month. All right, guys, now it's time for our memory verse. This is one of my favorite verses. It is Deuteronomy 6, 5. Denver, you want to say it with me? Yes, sir. How about Bronco? Okay, good deal. Here we go. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Deuteronomy 6, 5. All right, now there's a few of you that were sitting down. I need you up, okay? Stand up, stand up. Let's all do this together. Here we go. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Deuteronomy 6, 5. All right, guys, stay standing. It's time for the chant. This is going to be a special one. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Let's get this chant started. Quarantine edition. Pump the collar. Creation. Fall. Flood. Nations. 4,000 years. Saul. Sarah. Abraham. Lot. Tara. Israel. Promised land. Isaac. Ishmael. Jacob. Esau, Joseph, Egypt, Jews, Egypt, 400 years. Bondage, Moses, let my people go. No way, Jose, 10 plates, Passover, Red Sea, Mount Sinai. Law, Tabernacle, Levites and Priests, Offerings and Feasts. 12 Spies, Wanderers, Forty years dies. Joshua, back to the promised land. Divide, conquer, divide, set up. Twelve tribes. Judges, four hundred years. Deborah, you go girl. Gideon, Samson. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes, except Ruth and Samuel. United Kingdom, 120 years. King Saul, no heart. King David, whole heart. King Solomon, divided heart.
Okay, guys, it's time for our story. So once again, if you don't have your Bibles, go grab your Bibles because we are going to need them today as we're going to dive into the book of Judges and talk about Gideon. Now, before we dive in, I just want to do a brief recap. Um, the first five books of the Bible are known as the books of law. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And now we're in the division called history. So we're actually going to move chronologically through the history of the nation of Israel. And if you remember last week, they finally entered the promised land under the leadership of Joshua. And at the end of the book of Joshua, Joshua gives them a big proclamation to motivate them to love the Lord their God and follow him faithfully. And then he dies, and we enter the book of Judges. So hopefully, if you've been following along with your readings, you are about halfway through the book of Judges already. We're going to be in Judges chapter 6 today. Just a reminder, when you're looking for the chapter title, you want to look for the big, bold number 6. That's going to be where we are in our story today. Now, in your chant, you actually learned a couple of new parts that are going to be about judges. So if you remember, it's judges, 400 years, and then we meet three of our most popular judges. It's Deborah, so you kind of like swipe down your hair, right? Deborah, and you go, girl, because she was so cool. And then there was Gideon, who we're going to talk today, and you twist like you're twisting a fleece. And then there's Samson, Samson. So keep practicing your chant. We'll come back with that next week again. But when we start the book of Judges, we actually see something that continues the entire book. And it's this repeated phrase and cycle. So the repeated, repeated phrase is, the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. You're going to see that phrase over and over again. And so I'm actually going to call my helpers up here, and they're going to help me teach you the cycle that we see over and over again in the book of Judges. So it starts like this. First of all, we have A. And then we have B. And then we have C. Next, what do you think it is? It is D. And last but not least, I bet you can guess it. Nope, you'd be wrong. It's P. <laughs> That's exactly right. Our cycle is A, B, C, D, P. So what do those stand for? Well, my helpers are going to help you out again. A stands for abandon God. Good, let's speed it up. B stands for bondage. Awesome. C stands for cry out. Good. D stands for deliverance. And P stands for peace. Do you guys get it? So what happened throughout the book of Judges is that the people would abandon God and they would start worshiping false idols. Maybe you're going to see a specific false god by the name of Baal, B-A-A-L. They did this over and over again. And then God, in order to punish them, would put them in bondage. He would raise up an enemy from around one of the nations in the land of Canaan, and he would put the people in bondage. So the people in our story today are actually the people of Midian. But then the people would live in bondage for a time. They would get tired of it. They would get restless. And they would cry out to God. Let's see. And God would raise up a judge to deliver them from the people that were oppressing them and putting them in bondage. And then the judge would be victorious. He would lead the nation of Israel's army to go defeat the people. And God would give them peace for a period of time. But you guessed it. It just starts all over again. As soon as that judge died the people would go after false gods again, and it started all over again. So we see this cycle over and over again. Now, if you open up your Bibles, like I said, to Judges chapter 6, I want to read the very first verse. It says this, The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of Gideon for seven years. Now, this was a really rough time for the nation of Israel, because the Midianites would wait until all all of the Israelites' crops came up and were really awesome, ready to eat, ready to go and be harvested. And then the Midianites would swoop in and steal their food. So when we actually meet our character Gideon, he's hiding in a wine press, beating out wheat to get grain because he wants to hide it so the Midianites won't take it from them. 
And this is what happens. The angel of the Lord appears to Gideon and says this. The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Now, it's kind of ironic that the angel of the Lord calls him a mighty man of valor, or your Bibles might actually say a mighty warrior. Because think about what Gideon's doing. Does it seem like he's a mighty warrior if he's hiding, trying to get stuff done so the Midianites don't steal it from him? No. And Gideon didn't actually believe that he was a mighty warrior either. He thinks to himself that his clan, his house, his tribe, he's the youngest of all of that. But the angel of the Lord knew what he saw in Gideon and was going to work through him. And this is the most important thing. The message when Gideon asks, how can this be? How can it be me that's going to lead him? God says this in verse 16. And the Lord said to Gideon, but I will be with you. And that's one of the most important points that we want to make sure we understand. God was not going to lead Gideon to do it all by himself. In fact, we're going to see God do almost everything for Gideon and for the nation army. Okay? So let's keep going. So Gideon wants to make sure that this is the right thing. God actually asks Gideon to do something very important to start it all off. He says to Gideon, your father has false gods and idols set up to the false gods. What I want you to do is I want you to tear down those false gods and I want you to sacrifice a bull on an altar to show the people that something's coming, something's changing. Now, Gideon was a little afraid, so he did it at night. But he actually did it that night. He grabbed a couple of his buddies and he went. He tore down the altars to Baal. He tore down the altars to the Astro. He built the altar, just like God said, and he sacrificed a bull. You know what happened? The next morning, the people of the town came around. They were upset, and they called out Gideon's father. And they were like, who did this? Now, they figured out it was Gideon, but Gideon's father stepped in and said, hey, let Baal contend for himself. If Baal's upset about what Gideon did, then Baal can deal with it. Mm. Okay, so keep moving on. Gideon wanted to make sure that this was God's will. So he actually does two tests. So I want you to go down chapter 6 to verse 36. He's going to put out two tests for God. This is what he says. He says to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said, behold, I'm going to lay a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece alone, but the ground is dry, I will know that you will save Israel by my hand. What do you think happened? You know what? God did that. The next morning, it was exactly like that. The fleece was wet, but the ground was dry. Now Gideon says, okay, one more time, God, if you'll let me. This time, I want the fleece to be dry, but the ground to be wet. And the next morning, that's exactly what happened. Because God did raise up Gideon, and he did want him to defeat the Midianites. So we're ready to go. We're ready to have a massive battle. Do you know how many Midianites there were? There was over 100,000 Midianites in their army. But 32,000 strong, capable men for the nation of Israel showed up to go to battle under Gideon's lead. You know what God says? God looks at Gideon and he says, you've got too many men. What? 32,000 versus 130,000? That doesn't seem like too many men to me. What do you think? Oh, it doesn't seem like a lot, but Gideon trusts God. So God says to Gideon, here's the deal. You tell everybody in the army, whoever is afraid, go ahead and go home. So Gideon does. <gasps> 22,000 men leave. Now they only have 10,000 men. Do you think that was enough? Too many men still. Do you know why? I want you to turn to chapter 7. So look at that big bold 7. And go down to verse 2. This is what it said. Lest Israel boast over me and thinks that their own right hand has saved them. So God did not want Israel to take credit for this victory. He was going to take the credit because he was the one that was going to do it for them. So the next test he says, okay, now have the men go down to the water and ask them to take a drink. Seems simple enough, right? Well, God says, whatever men kneel down and drink directly from the stream, those have got to go. They're going to go home. But any man that kneels down but draws the water up and drinks it out of their hand, like lapping it up like a dog, 
those can stay. And do you know how many men stay? 300 men. Look at this, verse 8. So, so the people took provisions in their hands and their trumpets, and he said, all the rest of Israel, every man to his tent, but retained the 300 men. Now they're about to go into battle, and you know what happens? Okay, so God says to them, you're going to take your torches, and you're going to put a pot over the torch, and then you're going to take your trumpets, and you're going to go into the camp, and you're going to smooth. Wait, let me show you. I actually got stuff. You know what this is? This actually looks like Maui's hook, but it also kind of looks like what a shofar, a trumpet of Israel, would have looked like. So I'm going to use it as a trumpet today. So they would have had their torches. They would cover them with a pot so that when they went into the camp, remember there's just 300 men, and they surround the entire camp of Midian. They divide up into three groups of 100. And when they come up, they take their torches, and God says, when I tell you, you're going to smash your trumpet. They blew their trumpets, and they entered the camp, and everything went crazy. The Midianites turned on each other, and they started attacking each other. And God gave Israel the victory. You know, it's interesting when we think about stories like this. Yes, God wanted to make sure the Israelites knew that once again, he was going to take care of them. And you think about that cycle we talked about at the beginning. At the end of Gideon's life, when he dies, do you know what happens? The cycle starts all back over again, and the people turn back to the false gods of Baal and start worshiping them. And God raises up a whole other enemy. And we're going to just see that continue as we see each new judge come up. So let's think about what we're learning in this story. I want you to think about something for a second. If you had a friend that you were very close to continually betray you, would you want to be their friend anymore? Me either. But in all these stories, if we think about all the things that God has done for the nation of Israel, from Exodus and all the way through to now, Israel is constantly turning their back on God, worshiping and giving their time, their affection, and their attention to other false gods, lesser things that are not deserving of their worship. But God, when they cry out to him, he is compassionate, he is merciful, and he is faithful to them, despite their many, many betrayals. You know, the time of Gideon is actually a high point in Israel. It's one of the good times where they have a very long time of peace during the reign of Gideon. But at the end of his life, like I already told you, they turn away and start worshiping again, and it gets dark all over again. You know what? Easter is just a couple weeks away, and there's a lot of talk about the story of Easter of darkness and light, and we see that contrast. And we're going to talk about that in the next couple of weeks. But what I want to close today with this, remember the thing that God said to Gideon, because it's so important. When Gideon was worried and he didn't know if he could trust God, God said to Gideon, I will be with you. And guys, I want you to know that no matter what you are facing today, no matter what might seem confusing or frustrating or out of your control, I want you to know that God is sovereign. He is in control of everything. God's got a beautiful, good plan that he is working out. We're a part of that plan. We have a purpose in that plan. And even though times right now are a little bit unique and crazy and not like we're normally used to, we have so many opportunities to show the love of Christ to our neighbors, to our families, to our friends, maybe in different ways, but they're still meaningful just the same. And throughout all of it, God is going to be with us. So let's close in prayer. God, we thank you so much for the story of Gideon. We thank you just for the things we're learning about you, about your character, about who you are and what you ask of us. And help us to remember that obedience is important to you. And as we close out the month of March and finish all the stories, help us to remember that you discipline sin but reward obedience. And that is an important thing, God. Help us to understand that you are a loving, a merciful, a faithful God but you do ask certain things of us. And help us to show you that we love you by obeying your word and obeying the things that you've asked of us. Thank you for the story of Gideon. Thank you for us learning these things. Help everybody 
to continue to read through the Bible and bring us back next week as we'll continue our journey and talking about a new story. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys. We hope you had fun today. I know we had fun today, didn't we? It was so much fun. Guys, I, just, I pray that you guys stay within the readings. Keep doing this. Uh, I, I can't wait to see you guys again next week. I can't wait to see you guys again in person. But for now, we have to thank one special guest, Bronco. You did an amazing job today. You don't fall off your stool. Good job. Woo! Good job. Guys, come back again next week. Can't wait to see you. Living like a bandit, bullies run the planet. Now the fuzzy man left you empty handed. A battle rages up in these pages. Tearing up the story that you heard through the